Hello, my name is Andy Meir and this is a video produced in advance of a conference happening next week in Zurich, organised by Swiss Re's Centre for Global Dialogue. The conference focuses on human enhancement and it's a two-day event, the first day focusing on risk. And I think that's where I'd like to focus my reaction to this event and to think about what we might need to, to consider. Often when we talk about human enhancement and the ethical, the social, the legal implications of it, we focus on the consequences of doing it. But actually there are also consequences to not enhancing ourselves using technology. Um, we might make ourselves more vulnerable to an increasingly toxic environment if we fail to adopt enhancement technologies. We already do this to some extent by putting fluoride into tap water to make sure our gums and teeth are healthier. We inoculate ourselves when we're children to protect ourselves against a range of vulnerabilities within the environment. And so similarly, we might think about human enhancement as a necessary thing to guard against a range of risks that we might face in the future. Consider climate change, consider the ways in which the world is changing too, not just our own biology, but the biology around us. And so when we think about the ethics of human enhancement, it's not just a question of trying to promote a certain kind of lifestyle and discuss whether this is a valuable lifestyle, one that we ought to pursue, but it's also about thinking about a sense of solidarity. What is the value of human enhancement in a broader collective sense, not just in terms of my own individual aspirations or wishes, but how does human enhancement affect the global population, the sense of community? One of the challenges with enhancement is that this isn't just something that one country can decide on its own as to whether they want to go down this road or not. When one country begins to use human enhancement, another country will follow. Or at the very least, the people that live within that country may travel somewhere else to use that kind of technology. We've seen this kind of medical tourism happen elsewhere in healthcare. And I think it's reasonable to assume that this is not just a matter for local domestic governments to address and to make resolutions for. It requires a, a broader, broader dialogue. And part and parcel of that is the degree to which these kinds of technologies affect a sense of social justice, our experience of fairness and justice within society. Now, if we look at the pharmaceutical companies, the way in which medicine has evolved historically, whilst we might argue that more people have access to these technologies now to make their lives better, to be well, to be healthier, there's also a sense of injustice in how these medical pharmaceutical products are distributed across the world. And so there's a really strong question we have to ask about the degree to which human enhancements will allow people globally to experience greater sense of justice. And um, this is why I think the dialogue is necessarily a global dialogue. Um, the kinds of risks that people may take in using technologies are global issues. They require global standards of care. Um, the way in which the technology itself will be distributed will be on a global scale. So in my mind, the risk, the kind of key ethical issue we have to think about is the risks we face by not adopting the technology. Now, this has nothing to do with the kind of lifestyles we want to pursue. Yes, we should allow people to pursue whatever lifestyle they wish and adopt technologies to an extent that they don't affect others in detrimental ways. So we should be proactively liberal in our acceptance of human enhancement, but also um, vigilant to the kinds of harms that might arise for people if they choose not to use enhancements. How will it affect our sense of justice if, um, as is the case already, some kids in universities are taking cognitive enhancers to help them get through exams, get better results, whilst others are not. So one of the big implications of this is how we monitor and regulate and assess the degree to which enhancements are being used in society in a way that distorts some sense of fairness, some sense of justice, and some sense of order within our lives. Um, I think this is perhaps the reason why human enhancement issues are so significant is that it really can disrupt the fundamental order within society, the belief that we have some degree of meritocracy within our lives, the aspirations we have for people, the kinds of aspirations we encourage them towards, the belief systems we have. All of these things are brought into question when we embrace human enhancements. And at this point in time, medical technology hasn't really got that far. Uh, we still are pretty much repairing people, making them well as opposed to better than well. Human enhancement changes that. And what we have to figure out 
is the degree to which this change is going to be for the better of society or for the worse. And I think the event next week will help us a great deal, especially in connecting the academics, the industry leaders and the policy makers who will face these questions uh, over and over again in the next decade or so. So I hope you can follow the event. There's a live stream taking place uh, during the conference. Um, or if you can get there, wonderful. Uh, but stay in touch and stay tuned. Thanks very much.